Hello again, this is part two of the information about the true meaning of Christmas. Okay, we covered a lot of info about uh, the Babylonian worship of Nimrod, which is December 25th. Uh, the evergreen tree, so-called, the evergreen tree, which we know through studying, is called the Yaw tree, erected over Nimrod's gravesite. Uh, December 25th has been uh, celebrated throughout the whole earth when the tongues was uh, changed, was switched. You know, God, at first, everyone, of course, as I said before, was on one accord, one tongue. When God split the tongues, everyone took their language and their tongue to another part of the world. And this is the reason why we have December 25th. And I'm just doing a recap of part one, just in case someone didn't catch that one. All right, I want us to turn to Jeremiah chapter 10, start at the second verse through five. This information I'll go into, which will denounce your tree, your so-called Christmas tree that we put up in our houses and in your churches, um, putting lights and everything on the, you know, the, the gold and the silver and things of that nature. We're going to find out that this is all of this is pagan. This is paganism. Okay. Now, and I'm actually talking to the true worshipers out here. They're going to feel this. They're going to understand this information is true. Um, their hearts, you know, they're, they're going to be convicted. If they do have a tree in their, in their yard, if they feel that they're going to go out, you know, go out to the stores and buy one. When they see this video, they won't. All right, the true worshipers. This is for you all. All right. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 says, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathens, and be not dismayed the signs of heaven. So when it says, Be not dismayed the signs of heaven, that is your astrology, your prognosticators. You know, you, we have different signs. You know, that's your astrology. For the heathens are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. That's your Christmas tree, which is your yule tree. They fasten it with nails and with a hammer, that it may not move. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also it is in them to do good. It's not even in them to do good. So from just reading Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 through 5, states that you should not even put a Christmas tree in your house. It says go not to the way of the heathen. This is a command. People believe that we're not under law anymore. But it says follow the commandments. It's not just talking about the Ten Commandments. Because if that's the case, you know, it's okay for a man to lay with another man then. Because that's not in the commandments. But it was commanded, not with the Ten, that a man should not lay with another man. This is off the subject, but I wanted to show through this information that it, this is a command that Most High told us. Do not go into the way of the heathens. Go not to the way of the heathens cutting a tree or whatever you're doing that's going in that way all right that's one more thing i want to do a few more things let me see if i can put this up here real quick give me a minute now we have Santa Claus, right? Okay. This guy is supposed to go around the whole world before morning. Right? He can he can go everywhere. He he's he can hear you. He, he know when you're being good, he know when you're being bad, right? Let's see something. All 
All right. Let me show you how subtle Satan is. And this is just the first information. This is what you have here. Let me see if I can get this up here the right way. Santa, right? Look at the word very closely. Okay? Look at the word very closely. This is the word you see. Satan. Again. He's very subtle. Then, on top of that, what color, and I'm jumping on any race. See, we see, this can cause problems, but I have to put this information out. What is the, is the main pictures that they use to say that Christ died? What, what are these pictures? This is one of the images, right? This is Christ. This is what they say. This is Jesus, they say, right? Now, we read in Revelations 1, 14, we understand the true identity of Christ. But what we don't know is that the origin of the picture of Christ, the image, is Cedrus Boger, the Pope's son. He was a known poisoner. I want you all to pay attention to these pictures. It's the same picture. It's a Leo, this is Leonardo's Leonardo's lover, which is Cesar Borgia. Okay. Now I put that up for a reason because we we'll take down the image of Christ, and you know, around Christmas time you'll see the baby in the manger and pictures of Christ during Easter. But we'll, we'll take down the image, but we won't take down the doctrine that comes with the image. And we have to, for the simple fact is, I'm gonna say this, the Romans were the one that killed Christ, okay? And of course, Judas is carried out. He was the one that set Christ up. You know, he was a backstabber. We understand that. Um, but Christ was whipped. He was beat. Okay. He was whipped 40 times. They scorched Christ. They treated him like he was nothing. Now, I said that for a reason. Because, again, remember I said that once I put out this information, people won't follow Christmas anymore. You have this word here. Okay, I'm gonna put Roman Catholics. They're the ones that introduced through Christianity Christmas. And I misspelled Christmas on purpose. Okay. Because they misspelled it on purpose. MAS is not a word in the dictionary, but it's a word in Hebrew and in your Greek. And I'm going to bring out the information. Thank the most high for this information that I, that he gave me. Christ mass, right? Now you would think they should have spelled it this way. Just follow the pointer. And look at this. This is the way you actually supposed to spell Christmas. Christ mass, right? M-A-S. Hmm. Let's see what Christ mass mean. Christ, we understand, means Christos. That's common sense. That's a beautiful name. It's, that's a perfect, pure, holy name. The anointed one, the Messiah, the Christos. That's right. Let's look up the word mass, M-A-S. We understand what mass means, M-A-S-S. -S. That's common sense to know that that's congregating to come in an assembly. That's common sense. But what is not common, and again, Satan has hid himself. 
let's figure it out. Let's find out what it is. If you have a strong concordance, let's see if I can use this computer over here. If you have a Strong's Concordance, I want you to go to your Hebrew and put in the three letters that we just seen in the word Christmas at the end. M-A-S. Now, if you all are turning, your mouth should be open. Because we had just read, we understand that Christ was beaten and he was scorched for us. Do you know that mass, M-A-S, means to whip or to beat or to scourge? Christ was scourged. These, these Masrits and these satanic worshipers mixed the word Christ and what happened to him together. Let's go to the to 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 it to the Greek part and put in the same three letters. And I'm gonna show you what number it is. It's Greek number thirty one forty seven. It means to whip, to scourge. In your Hebrew, number. 2554 to shake off to violate do violence take away violently wrong imagine wrongfully that's your Christmas this is your Christmas they are mocking they are marking Christ being whipped, Christ being scourged and whipped. See you with all, see you all with other videos.